So that's a clue to use Newton's second law. So the net force is MA, the actual force is 50 newtons minus 30 newtons. So M times A then it's got to be 20 newtons. Okay, so the acceleration 20 newtons divided by the mass. So this again, remember that's the weight, that's not the mass. We can, uh, we can figure out the mass though. So um, M times G is 75 newtons. So M 75 newtons divided by 9.8. Something bigger than seven and a half, let's see. 7.65. And then you can put this in over here. 20 newtons, 7.65. Kilogram meter per second squared, whoops the kilograms cancel out. So 20 divided by 7.65. 2.6 or so. Good, that's one of the answers. Makes you feel good, right? Seeing it there. Excellent. So in this problem I gave you the forces and asked you to figure out the acceleration. What if I gave you one of the forces and the acceleration and then you gotta figure out the other force. So this is, again, a good place to start with this problem, but make sure that you can think about that. Like, what if he gave me the acceleration, but then I had to figure out the force? So you've got to be able to, to uh, adapt. Same concept, though. All right, any questions on that one? All right. Are you feeling pretty good so far? Anyone? See, I can't tell if you're smiling, right? I'm looking like nobody's smiling, but maybe you are and I just can't tell. I'm smiling. I don't know if you can tell. Okay. Uh, here's a kinematics one. The car is traveling with a constant speed when the driver suddenly applies the brakes, causing the car to slow down with a constant acceleration of three meters per second squared. If the car comes to a stop in 30 meters, what was the car's original speed? So we're going at a constant speed, hit the brakes, we slow down uh, at that rate. We come to a stop after 30 meters, what was the original speed? Okay, so definitely this is a kinematics problem, right? Based on the way it's looking. They aren't talking about forces or anything like that. Okay, so we're, uh, we're looking for the original speed, so the initial speed. How much is the final speed? So you've got to read it carefully. It comes to a stop. Zero. This happens over a displacement of 30 meters. And... Uh, we're slowing down with this magnitude of acceleration. So this technically is negative, right? Because you're slowing down. So we, uh, we're trying to figure out the initial speed. The final is zero. Here's the uh, displacement. Here's the acceleration. We don't know the amount of time this took. We do have the three kinematics equations. Now uh, I'll just write them all and we can pick which one we can use. Sometimes maybe you have to use two. They all have initial velocity involved, so it makes it a little trickier, maybe. Now, we don't know the amount of time. If you wanted to, you could use the first one to figure out how long this takes, what, what period of time this takes. And then if you have the amount of time it takes, you could actually use the third one to figure out uh, the um, initial velocity. You could do it that way if you wanted to. It's a little cumbersome because this is a t squared and a t. I think if we just use the second one, the only thing that we don't know is the initial speed, right? We, uh, the final speed zero, we're trying to figure out the initial speed, the acceleration's given, delta x is given. So we could just use the second one 
we'll have to do some algebra, which is usually how it works with these things. We we'll have to do some algebra, but we can do that. There was once a student that solved all these kinematics equations for all different variables. You know, you know what I mean? Like, uh, we're going to just have these three and then work with them the way that it is. This person actually solved them in all different ways. And you'll see what I mean in just a minute. Okay, so uh, we can use this one. I'll just rewrite it here to be clear. Uh, the final velocity is zero. So if you subtract 2a delta x from both sides, you get this. And then take the square root of both sides. So they had gone through and said final velocity is zero. Then they solved all of these like this. Like this would be one of their equations. I don't recommend doing that, but uh, somebody did it once. Now at this point, <coughs> if you forgot that the acceleration is negative, you would probably figure it out because you already have a negative here. Negative 2a delta x. If you left a positive, then you're taking the square root of a negative number. So then it might dawn on you, oh yeah, that's supposed to be negative. And then we have uh, 30 meters. Sixty, ninety. So uh, I would guess 10.2, but I'm not sure what it comes out to be. We could do it really fast. 2 times 3.5 times 30, 210. Take the square root of it or raise it to the half power. Oh, actually 14.5. Okay, so it's choice A. Okay, good. All right, uh, you'll see something like this. Remember, the acceleration is negative if you're slowing down. All right, any questions on this one? All right. Just a couple more to go. A car starts from rest. Okay, initial velocity of zero. Accelerates uniformly at four meters per second squared for five seconds. And then uh, it next maintains this the velocity it should reach for 10 seconds, then slows down at uh, 2 meters per second squared for 4 seconds. What is the final speed of the car? Thanks, Rick. So um, we did problems like this. If you remember, it was a train going through a train station. It would speed up, go uh, through the town at a constant speed, and then slow back down to the next stop. So take a look back at uh, the first homework maybe even the second homework um, with this sort of problem. The key here is to really sketch it out. This has three different legs of the trip. So let's see what we have here. Okay, so uh, start some rest. Accelerates uniformly, the first part here. 5 meters per second squared. Maybe I'll just call this one acceleration 1, like the first part. For uh, 5 seconds, time 1, I'll just call it that. Uh, maintains the speed, so it reaches some speed. I'm going to call this V2, actually. It uh, maintains the speed for the next uh, 10 seconds. Uh, it then slows down. So maybe I'll call this one A3. For uh, four seconds. And what is the final speed the car reaches? Okay. So you go from rest to some speed here. Then you keep that speed for 10 seconds. And then you slow down at this rate for four seconds. Okay? Now, the way to think about this, remember, the acceleration is five meters per second every second. So after one second, you're going five. After two seconds, you're going 10, right? Because you increase by five meters per second every second. Or we could do it like this. Later velocity is equal to earlier velocity plus A1 times T1. And we start from rest. 
So this V2 is 5 meters per second squared for 5 seconds. Or you could reason it out, like I said, 5 meters per second every second. So you've got a total of 5 seconds. You actually reach 25 meters per second. And then you keep that um, over here for 10 seconds. There's actually more information than we need in this problem. And then over here you go from 25 meters per second down to something that you're trying to figure out um, at this rate. So uh, every second this goes down by 2. So if you start at 25, one second um, later you're down to 23 and then 21 and then 19 and then 17. If I did that right. So uh, we could do it like this though. V3 is equal to uh, V2. This is later, this is earlier plus A3 times T3. Okay, so we start at uh, 25 and then uh, plus negative 2 times 4. I don't really see the answer there. Let's see. Maybe I'm not doing it right in my head. Should be 17, right? Looks like I goofed up the answers there. Closest one would be 16, but it really should be uh, 17, it looks like. Ah, here's why I messed up. This isn't 5, right? This is, this is supposed to be 4. I put, oh, you can't see it on the screen, but, but this number, uh, this 5 meters per second squared, was actually supposed to be 4 meters per second squared for 5 seconds. That's where I messed it up. So let me quickly fix that. I guess that would be a benefit of uh, having the answers there. You work it out, you realize 17. Well, the closest is 16. Um, if you just did what I did and, and circled 16, I would probably give you 9 out of 10 points anyway. I mean, you did the physics part right, you just wrote this number down wrong. That's supposed to be 4. And that's 4. And then this is 20. This is 20. Uh, this is 20. And then this should be 20. And then we end up with uh, 12. Okay, and then that's the actual answer. Oh, good. So uh, I saw the 5 with the time, and then my brain wrote 5 for the acceleration. Actually, my hand wrote it. My brain told me to do it, though. Okay. Good, so, yeah, that happens sometimes, right? All right, any questions on this one? So look back at the homework, too. I mean, if I were going to study for this, I would start with the practice test, go back through the homework assignments, um, go back through the notes. If you don't have time to read the chapters, at least uh, look at the summary at the, at the end of them. Okay, and I think we just have one more. Ah. So you'll have something like... Uh, some kind of trig problem. This one, uh, we have a vector 5.5 meters long, lies in the second quadrant, makes an angle of 34 degrees with the um, positive y-axis. We want to know the components of this vector. So I threw one of these uh, kind of mathematical ones on here. If you're not sure of the picture during the test, just ask me. But basically we have this oh, yep. so they're saying that this is 5.5 meters long this angle is 34 degrees and we want to know what's the x component and what is the y component so uh or if you want to do it this is this is the x component this is the y component so the x component's got to be negative. So actually, I think this was one of that we. This was one of those voting on questions that we had before. So the x component's got to be negative. So it's going to have to be either uh, a, b, or d. The y component's got to be positive. So that's between a and d now. Um, you can actually figure out how big these things are. That's 34 degrees. I guess this angle then would be 56. 
because it adds up to 90 degrees. And you could uh, do it at this any way you want to. So uh, the sine of 56 is Ay over A. Cosine of 56, that's the adjacent side, Ax over A. Now this is just going to give me the magnitude of Ax. From the picture, I know it's going to be negative. So I'm just using these small triangles. OK, so then uh, A sine of 56 will be Ax. So we've got 5.5 uh, times the sine of 56. Uh, 4.6. And then you do the same thing over here. Ax, if you just put the number in, 5.5 times cosine of 56. It's 3.1. And then from the picture, you know it's got to be negative 3.1, really. So it looks like choice D, negative uh, 3.1, and 5 points. Or 5 points. It's supposed to be 4.6, I guess. Did I goof it up? Let's see. Oh, yeah, this is supposed to be 4.6. Okay. I saw 56. Wow, my brain's just not uh, functioning properly. Okay. Good. So that's the way that you get it. And from the picture, you know that this, that's got to be negative. All right. Excellent. Well, that's the whole thing. Hopefully, you feel pretty good about it. The culmination of four weeks and then plus this week. Any questions or comments? All right, send me any emails you want to. I'll be here uh, um, if you want to meet before the test or something like that. Just uh, shoot me an email. We can meet before the test. Uh, we can just come down and meet in the, in the uh, lab so it's nice and spread out and stuff. If not, send me an email, and I'll see you on Wednesday then.